14. It is a case airflow fan and it seems like a really good value. Let's get into why I think that it might be a great value for your next computer build. First, a little bit of spec information. It's a 140 millimeter class fan, 25 millimeters thick. Amperage range, is, or max amperage, is listed at 0.11 amps, 200 to 1350 RPM. The noise level was listed at 0.3 sone. Uh, airflow is listed at 74 CFM. Air pressure is 1.6 millimeters of H2O. A uh, bearing is a fluid dynamic bearing with a six year warranty. First of my testing results were in the cased simulation test. So I took a number of data points, each representing different size computer cases uh, to suit your particular computer case needs. The first is the six inch mark. This is represented by your small form factor cases and <clears throat> uh, short throw distances like air th being blown from the bottom of your case up towards your GPU. Think of a case that would be able to hold 120 millimeter, millimeter class fan or potentially 140 millimeter class fan. Then we have the 9 inch mark. This would be your compact towers a computer case that would be able to hold a standard ATX length motherboard with a GPU of the length of the motherboard but no extra room beyond that. So a computer case that would max out at 220 millimeter class fans, somewhere around there. And then we have the 11 inch mark. This would be your standard mid tower cases where you would be able to fit, in terms of length, 320 millimeter class fans or a 360 a AIO or radiator. Lastly, we have the 14.5 inch mark. This would be your truly large tower, something like the Fractal Design Torn, and it would be able to fit around 340 millimeter class fans. So it'd be a truly large case. So depending on what size case you are shopping for or you currently own, you wanna pay special attention to these data points. How does this com fan compare against my control fan? The control fan is based three parts A12 x 5 to one part A14 to blend the fans together to get a composite 130 millimeter class fan to kind of get the best of both worlds. So fans that perform over it in the upper right hand direction tend to be our better fans so a a plus supreme king i guess and fans that are underneath it if they're close to the line they could still be considered okay but if the farther they deviate from it the worse that fan is i'm sorry the graph does not have uh, labels on it. I'll try to explain it as I'm going through each one, but I may forget. But air flow, so air speed, is almost always the vertical axis on the left side here, and the horizontal is almost always decibels or length in inches. So this is distance away from the front of the case. And we can see that the I put the F12 on here, the 120 millimeter class fan, just to see how it compared against the F14. And we see that the F12 does better at the 6 and the 9 inch mark, but as the case gets bigger, so the 11 inch mark, they're basically tied. And by the time you get to a large case, the F14 is the better choice. So if you're looking at a big case, the F14 is a better fan. If you're looking at mid towers, either will do. But if you think you might grow in the future, I would recommend going with the bigger 140 millimeter class fan. But if you're looking at anything in a smaller case, you'd probably be better served getting that F12. How about at 100% PW fan signaling? This is where the F14 really shines. It just takes off past my control fan as well as the F12. But generally speaking, you're not going to be running your case fans at 100% PW fan signaling. If you are, there's probably something gone wrong overheating. Um, but if you do find that you've run your case fans at 100%, then I would say that the F14 is a better choice than the F12, even taking into account the noise normalized results. And if we take a look at how this fan compares against other fans that I've tested, we can see this would be mostly, actually no, they're all except for the F12 x 5 140 millimeter class fan. We can see that at noise normalized results, the F14 is pretty much in the middle of the pack. Uh, at the 60s mark, it's a little bit on the low side, the 9 inch mark, it's kind of catching up. It's a very flat line. So it still doesn't peak as high as many of the other fans. But by the time we hit the 11 and 14.5 inch mark, it's actually moved up in the pack. So at the nine, 11 inch mark, it's very much middle, middle of the pack. But by 14.5 inches, I would call it the upper end. So it's doing really quite well. You know, only a few fans like the Silent Wings 4 Pro um, are beating it. And at 100% PW and fan signaling, well, for kicks and giggles, I do have the NFA14 on here, and it, it just doesn't make sense to show it. It makes it harder to read the graph. But if you need the absolute maximum 
amount of airflow, you do want to get 3000 RPM fans. If you want normal amounts of airflow, the Tough Fan 14 Pro is an excellent choice, as well as the Silent Wings 4 Pro 140. Also, it sits right up there at, at the top in terms of normal fans. The uh, F14 is still sort of in the middle of the pack. It doesn't quite excel. But if we take a look at the noise results for it, it's only at 22 decibels. It is the quietest fan other than the um, NF A15, which is a 140 millimeter class fan, and it is beating out that fan. So if you don't need extreme amounts of airflow, it still is looking like a great fan for your next computer build. Now noise results, so this is airspeed vertical. Horizontal is noise level. Every 10 decibels is a doubling in noise volume. So do take that into account. The F14 starts off kind of at the bottom of the pack, doesn't quite do as well. And then you hit an efficiency part of the curve. I did hit a harmonic or a resonant frequency within the fan at that next data point, And then it comes back in line. So as long as you're avoiding that harmonic or wherever there may be a harmonic, the fan is doing relatively nicely. But once again, there are fans that do overall perform better than it. Like the Tough Fan 14 Pro overall is a smoother transition as it climbs up its RPMs in terms of its relative noise value, while the F14 is a little bit more sporadic. But if you can live with that sort of changingness, I guess, then it should do so. air cooler the Noctua U12A. On the graph we have airspeed vertical, horizontal is RPM. On the right graph we have airspeed vertical and on the horizontal it's decibels. So once again I do have the F12 on here and my control fan here is in red and in terms of blade design for the RPM range that they run it is actually a relatively more efficient blade design than my control fan which is kind of interesting and funny. So it just shows that I really do need to acquire a thick boy radiator to really put these fans through the test and it's through viewers like you hitting that subscribe button joining me on patreon and becoming a youtube member that will help uh, make this channel be able to afford upgrading equipment uh, down the line and if we take a look at noise versus airspeed this is where things start changing up we see that the f12 actually like climbs very quickly it starts off worse in efficiency than my control fan climbs gets near it before it starts uh, deviating away and becoming um, overall less efficient. So it's noisy for how much air it's actually producing, which again, this fan isn't specifically designed for radiators, so that makes quite a bit of sense. And if we compare it against a bunch of other fans that I've tested, we see that the F14 is kind of in the middle of the pack. It's not a bad airspeed at 0.9 meters per second. I do have some wattage information. This is an estimation because I... Uh, I'm currently just measuring airspeed through the cooler, but I did do a series of tests on my cooler for what um, airspeeds traveling through it equated to what wattage is, so it's accurate within about 5 watts. And I have a full video on it if you're interested in it. If you really wanted to, you could strap this fan to a cooler. I probably wouldn't recommend it though. The design is not um, uh, particularly designed for that sort of application. If we jump things up to 100% PEW fan signaling, we see that it stays more or less in the middle of the pack. Uh, an interesting result about it though, it is sitting in line in terms of noise value with other fans around it. So it's not particularly noisy at the amount of work that it's doing pushing air through. Matter of fact, um, it's in line in terms of performance with the Unifan SL Infinity 140. But the Infinity is a little bit quieter, but its blade design is also more in tune for being pressure application. So you do have to pick and choose what sort of thing you need and whether a fan will be sufficient or if you're chasing that absolute maximum, which is where you'd be looking at the upper end of the graph. In terms of its noise efficiency, so we got airspeed vertical and noise level horizontal. The F14 is sort of at the bottom end of these better fans and that's fans that I selected for the subsample selection to make it easier to read. These are fans that I consider to be good. 
So it is sitting towards the bottom end of this good fence, but in the good fence it is. So I think I could call it a good potential for air cooler if you needed it. Um, again, I would go with one specific design for it for optimal results, but if you needed to slap one on, it could work for a while. And last is CFM testing. The control fan here is based only off of the A14. It is no longer a composite fan. And the reason for that is the testing apparatus is different for the 140s and 120 millimeter class fans. CFM testing is my least favorite test because it's basically a scientific exercise. You blow air down a tube. It doesn't tell you how good this fan will be in a case airflow application where it's more like an open airflow box or through a radiator heatsink because again it's an open airflow tube so it doesn't tell you anything about how you're going to use this fan inside a computer case and thus i don't like it but we have the data and it lines up very close with my control fan in terms of rpm versus airspeed uh, airspeed being in cubic feet per minute cfm and then if we take a look at noise versus cfm it lines up very well with my control fan so it's very different than what we saw in other tests how does it compare against other fans well it's actually doing in the middle of the pack better than the a14 which is nice uh moving more air for that same airflow but there are fans that are significantly better than it at this noise normalized value how about at 100 percent p fan signaling once again middle of the pack there are other fans that are better than it better the fans that are worse than it let's just keep things moving along and in terms of that cfm versus noise rating it is shifted towards the upper end of the pack which is great to see i did have one fan that i had a little bit of a poor performance and that would be the x2 gp14 the other fans i would can be considered uh good good fans and it's right in line with them other than the one resonant frequency that we saw here we are in the open box experience for the arctic f12 pwm fan this is the pst series it's got a uh, let's focus on the box a 10 year warranty uh qr scanner on the bottom here it has some basic information 200 to 1300 rpm that rpm is a little bit on the low side uh these days but for a case fan it should be more than enough uh airflow in meters cube per hour uh, i do most of my calculations in cfn that's cubic feet per minute um you can just mathematically convert them. Uh, eight, the millimeters of H2O, so that's the pressure, uh, fluid dynamic bearing, the noise level. Now here's the fan. So the frame itself is bog standard basic. It's a square frame, so in theory, if you stack them next to each other, they create a good pressure seal. However, the idea behind this fan design isn't for pressure, it's for air flow. Um, but having them fit tightly next to each other is never a bad thing, in my opinion. The blades are actually surprisingly thick. Like the regular F12 had very, uh, compared to most other fans, very thin blades. Uh, this has a lot wider. And then they get very thin towards the inside. And they almost overlap, but not quite. Uh, the frame the blades get pretty close to the tip of the frame so they'd be pretty noisy in a pull application or if a filter was too close over top of it uh the struts on it are nice and thin i do like thin struts because it creates less obstruction for airflow to get past it they are basically very thin triangular in shape and they aren't too uh thick uh into the frame so that the blades have as much basically room in there as possible for that blade angle to sweep in and uh, a good amount of space between the blades and the strut if you get too close to the strut basically it causes that interference which um, uh, when, when you hear fans you hear a which is the sound of the air blowing you can hear a uh, like or a different kind of uh, like it won't be a consistent sound. It'll have a pitch to it, alternating sound. And that's the blades crossing past these struts. And then you can, of course, always have the hum of the motor itself. So those are the three main like sounds that come into the fan. But again, this is a very basic fan. Oh, that 
look at how that wire is just completely integrated in there. That's that's really cool. It's this is a cheap fan, but they're doing it better than like the A12X 25. So that's that's why I'm bringing it up, okay? Uh, but the housing on it is very basic. There is no room for rubber pads on it. Like if you're looking at this, the way it's all integrated together, there's no room on the back side for rubber pads or even on the front, which means that any vibrations that this fan has will transmit into your chassis. That can cause rever reverberation noise throughout your case if this is vibrating too much, uh, even if it's fully locked in, because it'll it'll try to move and it'll transmit that try to movement into your case, which causes noise. Uh, potentially, if uh, the if you've got a, a lemon, basically, if the fan is perfect, basically, uh, you don't need to worry about that. If you have mechanical hard drives, that is a big issue because then the fan is introducing vibrations into your case and into your hard drives. Uh, so the F14 is approximately a $12 fan, as I could find it in US dollars. Do note that prices of fans do change based on your region. And this is the value proposition, so it's performance per dollar. Uh, depending on where you live, if you live in another country, your dollar relative to the US dollar value may change how this fan um, ranks, among other ones. So just do note that. So the F14 is among the best in value. Uh, it isn't the tippy top, but it is in that upper echelon, even at 100% at the 6 inch mark. It is ranked very, very well. At the 11 inch mark, it is really, really well up there. So it's a good case airflow fan in terms of that value proposition. So if you're chasing to squeeze every penny out of your build, it's certainly a great choice. Even in CFM testing, it ranks among the best in that value proposition. Again, value proposition is not raw performance. We did see that it was more middle of the pack in terms of its actual performance, but that means that it's uh, the price you pay for the fan versus how much performance you get out of it is really good. So that is great to see for this fan. And even for, I mean, if you want to strap it to an air cooler, you can. It performs reasonably well, and it's a good value for it. So no, if your um, cooler fan dies and you only have these, it will work well enough on your cooler that you probably won't notice any performance degradation. So that is great to see from an airflow focused fan. And I'm cracking up a little bit because of how this analysis basically. And here's the raw data for this fan. This uh, data does belong to me. It takes me about one and a half to two hours to generate this level of detail uh, with my current testing methodology. Uh, it takes many more hours to update my graphs and charts and everything like that to make them organized and it takes longer to you know, or record the video and then of course edit it. Um, if you got suggestions for fans for me to take a look at, please leave in the comment section down below. I may have actually looked at it already, but just have not released the video yet. Uh, if you've got suggestions on ways I can improve the video, I do take that feedback seriously and try to always improve the way I'm making these videos. I know that I don't have labels on the graphs. That is one of the improvements that I've rolled out into the newest iterations, but unfortunately, this channel being essentially unpaid and being done in my free time, it isn't worth it for me, unfortunately, to go back and redo that. So that leads me to the point of, if you want to see this channel grow and become better and everything like that, please hit that subscribe button and consider joining me on Patreon and becoming a YouTube member because that money really will go a long way in making this channel possible because I want to get better equipment to do better testing. I want to build my a little at home noise isolating chamber. I need to build a test system uh, for doing this analysis, not just my gaming desktop. So get, get more focused in on it to really get the data and also expand what I'm going to do with this channel, like um, laptop uh, cooling fans, that kind of thing. Uh, anyways, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I hope that you will join me again on Computer Tech and More. In the